بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله. I begin with the name of Allah. All praise belongs to Allah. And may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad for he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. We've been talking about Al-Munnahu, the science of Arabic grammar, specifically classical Arabic grammar. This is the Arabic that was spoken well over a thousand years ago, but it's still preserved in the Quran, in the Hadiths, and the texts of the Islamic scholars throughout the centuries. Alhamdulillah. Now, if you understand this graph here, you understand a lot about classical Arabic grammar. At this point, if you read the Quran, if you read the Hadiths, you can probably make sense of a lot of what you're seeing. And I want you to notice, we're not talking about vocabulary so much. We're learning words here and there, but we're really talking about the skeleton of the language. Arabic vocabulary is somewhat interchangeable. For example, if you see a car, a car could be red, it could be black, it could be yellow, it could be green, it could be any color. That's sort of interchangeable. Likewise, the body of the car, the actual frame. Arabic grammar is about opening the hood of the car and seeing how this car actually functions. You can learn vocabulary, that's perfectly fine. But even if you don't know the words that you're reading, if you know this Arabic grammar structure here, you can still make sense of the sentence. As amazing as that sounds. That is the benefit of Arabic grammar. Now, we've been talking about a lot of things. For the next few lessons, we're going to talk about one specific topic here. Al-ismu al-mabni. What we called the non-inflected noun. What is that? Here is a quick reminder. Nouns, what we called al-ism, the noun, it's either inflected or non-inflected. Inflected is al-mu'arab. This means that the noun's ending indicates its grammatical function in a sentence. And we've seen this in all the lessons up to this point. جَاءَ رَجُلْ رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا مَرَرْتُ بِرَجُلْ This means a man arrived. This means I saw a man. Here, I passed by a man. Notice, if this word رَجُلْ, a man, is performing the action, double dhamma. This is called حَالَةُ rafa, the nominative case. If the action is being done to the man, رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا Double fatha, حَالَةُ nasab, The associative case. And if that word رَجُل is preceded by the particle bi, or fi, or ala, or min, or other particles that we talked about, double kasra. This is حَالَةُ الجار, Genitive case. Which is to say, that the noun's ending indicates its grammatical function in a sentence. We should be very familiar with this at this point. Now, let's look at the non-inflected noun, al-ismu al-mabni. This is when a noun's ending does not indicate its grammatical function in a sentence. For example, جَاءَ هَذَا رَأَيْتُ هَذَا مَرَرْتُ بِهَذَا what does this mean? This one arrived. I saw this one. I passed by this one. This word hada means this one. This, or you can say this one. Now I want you to notice that this is in the halatul rafa, the nominative case. This is in the halatul nasab, associative case. This is in the halatul jar, genitive case. And yet, it's not like this word here. Because all of these words look identical. It's not changing at all. This is a non-inflected noun. The noun's ending does not indicate its grammatical function in the sentence. If you were to look at rajul in isolation with a double dhamma, even if you don't know what the full sentence is, you can come to the conclusion that rajul a man is performing the action, very likely. Here, rajalan. A man is receiving the action, very likely. Rajalan. It's preceded by a particular type of particle, like bi or fi or min or ala, and so on. You can tell that by the word endings here. Here, you cannot tell anything about the grammatical function of this word in the sentence. 
You only know its grammatical function because you look at the rest of the sentence and you figure out. If there's a verb, a fa'il, there's probably a fa'il. Fa'il, this must be the fa'il. But the noun's ending doesn't indicate that. There's no double dhamma. There's no dhamma. There's nothing there. Hada does not change. This is a non-inflected noun. Al-ism al-mabni. Now, quick side note. Look at the word hada. It looks kind of odd, just as a word on itself, because it ends with a long alif at the end. You would think that this is pronounced hada. Hada, because that's a long alif at the end. It's not hada, it's hada. Hada. Stress on the first letter there. Ha da. Ha da. It's as if you're ignoring the alif there. Very interesting because most words in the Arabic language, they're spelled phonetically. You pronounce it how it looks. This is one of the few words that is not like that. Just something to note when you look at the word ha da. Here are some more examples for you. Al ismul mu'arab, the inflected noun. Ja'a walad. Ra'aytu waladan. Marartu bi walad. Notice, we're not pronouncing the last letters here, the last uh, vowels, because it's at the end of the sentence. But they're there. Waladun, waladan, waladin. Again, double dhamma, double fatha, double gasra. What does this mean? A child arrived. I saw a child. I passed by a child. We can figure out the function of these nouns here because of the ending of that noun. It indicates its grammatical function in the sentence. Here we have al-ismul mabni again, the non-inflected noun. Ja'a thalik. Ra'aytu thalik. Marartu bi thalik. Again, thalika, but because it's at the end of the sentence, you don't pronounce that fatah there. Thalika on its own, at the end of a sentence, ذلك. What does this mean? That one arrived. I saw that one. I passed by that one. I want you to notice ذلك does not change no matter what its grammatical function is in the sentence. Unlike ولدن, ولدن, ولدن. This is الاسم المبني, the non-inflected noun. These two words here, they fall within a category called ismul ishara, ismul ishara, the demonstrative noun, fancy term for you. Essentially, hava means this one, thalika means that one. Like in English, when we say this, that, these, those, that is called the demonstrative noun. Now, let's break this down, these two words here. This is actually an idafa, an adjunct construction. We talked about the idafa quite a while ago. Ismul ishara. It's actually ismul ishara t, because the second noun in an idafa is always in the genitive case. The x of y. The noun of al ishara. Ishara is to point to something. So this is the noun of pointing to something. That's what hada and dalika is for. This thing, that thing, these things, those things. That is what the ismali shara is for. Now, what's the difference between hada and dalika? Hada is usually used for things that are close by. You can say something nearby. When I say the word hada, Immediately, your mind says he's going to point to something nearby. This pen, this chair, this book. It's something close by, like I can see it. It's right next to me. It's right next to him. That's what hava is usually for. Dhalika is usually for something far away. If I say dhalika, you might say something in the horizon, that mountain, something in the sky, that cloud, something far away, that signpost over there. That is ذَلِكَ. So هَذَا, close by, usually. ذَلِكَ, usually, far away. Now, with all of that said, إِسْمُ الْإِشَارَ This is commonly used in two different ways. There's two ways that you can use the إِسْمُ الْإِشَارَ. 
An ismul ishara can be used as a standalone noun, as a noun that stands on its own. For example, hadha nafi'a. Hadha nafi'a. Now, let's say you don't know what this means, these two words. Because of all the grammar rules that we've learned up to this point, you can still figure it out. Hadha. Now, you know that hadha is a noun. It's called an ismul ishara. It's a noun. It has the word ism in it. If a sentence starts with a noun, what is that usually? Jumla ismiya, jumla fi'aliya. Hmm? Nominal sentence, verbal sentence. It's a nominal sentence, jumla ismiya, which means this is the mubtada. Every mubtada has a khabar. Hmm? Every subject has a predicate. This must be the predicate. And notice double dhamma, a noun when it's the khabar is in the nominative case, halatu rafa, and therefore that's a good sign of this. So you don't even know what these words mean necessarily, but you can figure out first word, mubtada, second word, khabar, jumla ismiya. Now what does this mean? Hada means this, this one, as we said. Nafi' means beneficial. This, beneficial. Because it's a jumla ismiya, we have to add a word. This is beneficial. That's what this sentence means. Hada nafi' this is beneficial. Whatever I'm pointing to, this is beneficial. The pen, the table, the book, whatever it is. Another sentence for you. Hada thaqil. Hada thaqil. This is what? What does thaqil mean? This heavy. It weighs a lot. Jumla ismiya. This is heavy. Hada maksur. Hada maksur. This is whatever maksur means. Broken. This is broken. So what you're seeing here is the word hada in ismul ishara is used as a standalone noun. It's a word on its own. This is beneficial. This is heavy. This is broken. Likewise, ذَلِكَ That one. What do you think ذَلِكَ نَافِعَ means? That is beneficial. ذَلِكَ ثَقِيل That is heavy. ذَلِكَ maksur. That is broken. Now, I want you to notice something. When I say ذَلِكَ maksur, that is broken. هَذَا maksur, this is broken. What is this? What is that? What, what is this even pointing to? It's unclear, isn't it? It's confusing. If someone comes up to you and says, ذَلِكَ thaqil, that is heavy. Unless they're pointing to something with their finger, that thing is heavy. You have no idea what they're talking about. What, what is that? What is this? These words only really help if they're followed after another word that they're pointing to, or if you're pointing to them with your hand. And so as a standalone noun, these words, these ismul uh, ishara, these demonstrative nouns, they're sort of limited. Unless I'm pointing to this or pointing to that, it's sort of unclear what I'm talking about when I say ذَلِكَ نَافِعَ That is beneficial. What is that? And so here is another way that the ismul ishara is used. Used with a substitution, a badal. What is the badal? We talked about this as well. Like for example, جَاءَ عُمَرُ الْإِمَامُ الْإِمَامُ جَاءَ عُمَرُ الْإِمَامُ Umar, the imam, arrived. This is a complete sentence. جَاءَ عُمَر Umar arrived. Al-imam is acting as the badal to give more information. Umar, the imam, arrived. Notice, Umar arrived, complete sentence. The imam arrived, complete sentence. Altogether, Umar, comma, the imam, comma, arrived. That is what a badal does. 
It's a word that can be switched with the word before it. The ismul ishara can be used just like this. Hada nafa. This is beneficial. We saw this already. But we can also say this. Hada al-qalamu nafa. Hada al-qalamu nafa. What does this mean? This, the pen, is beneficial. Literally, that's what it says. This, the pen, is beneficial. Let's write that down. This, the pen, beneficial. We can say, this one, the pen, is beneficial. Now it's clear what we're pointing to. This pen. But as you can see, this is kind of clunky. We wouldn't translate it like this usually into English. This one, the pen, is beneficial. How would we translate this? We would say, this pen is beneficial. Much cleaner translation. Literally, this one, the pen, is beneficial. You can say, this one, comma, the pen, comma, is beneficial. But in more common English, this pen is beneficial. But what I want you to notice is that this word al-qalam, the pen, it's parenthetical, meaning you don't have to have it here. If you say hadha nafi', this is beneficial, complete sentence. Al-qalam is acting as a badal. This, the pen, is what I'm talking about, is beneficial. And the proof is you can say hadha nafi', this is beneficial, or you can say al-qalamu nafi', the pen is beneficial. This could be a sentence on its own. And so this is interchangeable with this. This is the ismul ishara acting within a substitution, a badal. Another example. Hadha thaqil. This is heavy. We saw this already. But what is this? Hadha al kitabu thaqil. Hadha al kitabu thaqil. This, the book, is heavy. Again, Al-Kitab does not need to be there. You can say, Hadha thaqil. This is heavy. Complete sentence. It's just unclear. What is Hadha? What, what are you t pointing to when you say this? I'm pointing to the book. This, comma, the book, comma, is heavy. Or, in more common English, this book is heavy. Notice Alif Lam, the book, because we're pointing to a specific book. This book right here, it's heavy. Again, this is the ismul ishara, the demonstrative noun, used with a badal. This is the badal of this. And the fact that you can omit one of these words and the sentence is still complete shows that it's a badal. Hadha maksur. Hadha maksur. This is broken. هذا الباب مكسور. This, the door, is broken. You can say this one, comma, the door, comma, is broken. Or, in more common English, this door is broken. Again, الباب is the badal of هذا. What are we talking about when I say هذا? The door, الباب. This one, the door is broken or this door is broken. Likewise with ذَلِكَ, you can say ذَلِكَ سَيْفُ نَافِعَ ذَلِكَ سَيْفُ نَافِعَ What does this sentence mean? ذَلِكَ, that. A safe, the sword, نَافِعَ, beneficial. That sword is beneficial. بَدَل Because we can say ذَلِكَ نَافِعَ, that is beneficial, just unclear, what is that? ذَلِكَ سَيْفُ that sword, nafi, beneficial. What about this one? ذلك الرمح ثقيل. ذلك الرمح ثقيل. That spear is heavy. That spear is heavy. بدل. That is heavy. What is that? The spear. That spear is heavy. Down here. ذلك المغفر مكسور ذلك المغفر مكسور that 
the helmet is broken. Mirfar is a very old word. Mikfar is one of those metal helmets that people used to use back in the days. Something like this, with a, usually has like a little point at the top. And in Arabia, you would probably put a turban around it. So it's metal, protects your head in the middle of battle, and there's a turban wrapped around it. That is what this word means. So that, the helmet, badal, is broken. You see here. We can say, ذَلِكَ maksur that is broken. What is that? al the helmet. And so, that is that. اسم الإشارة, the demonstrative noun. The noun of pointing to things. We have هذا, usually used for something nearby. This pen, this book, this table. ذلك, things that are usually far away. That mountain, that cloud, that sign over there that's far away. ذلك. And this can be used as a standalone noun, like هذا مكسور. This is broken. But there's limited benefit to saying this is broken. Because what is this? Unless you know what I'm talking about or I'm pointing to the thing, it's unclear what hadha is. So this is also used as badal, substitution. You can say hadha al-babu maksur, which means this door is broken. Hadha al-babu maksur. Very clear. I'm talking about this door that's close by to me and you. It's broken. This is the badal of this. The proof is that you can take it away and it's still a complete sentence. It still makes sense. But the word al-bab just adds more clarity to what we're talking about when we say hadha. Alhamdulillah. So that is ism al the demonstrative noun. And again, all of this falls under al-ism al-mabni the non-inflected noun, because both hadha and dhalika, they never change. They never accept a double dhamma, double fatha, double kasra. They always stay hadha and dhalika, no matter what its function is in the sentence. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yamil qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathira.